this is Joe Herman, and welcome to this review of the Casio CDP-135. Let's start with the unboxing. The Casio CDP-135 came in this heavy-duty cardboard box, which I carried home. The CDP-135 is a true digital piano. It's meant for people who want an authentic, piano-like feel when playing. The Casio CDP-135, despite its low price, is not a cheap-feeling piano. It has a fully weighted keyboard action. The cardboard that the box is made of is remarkably stiff and heavy-duty. This styrofoam piece has some of the accessories that come with the CDP-135. Here's the AC adapter. There's the power cord. This is the sustain or damper pedal. You can purchase a higher end one and connect it to the digital piano if you prefer. Let's remove the Casio CDP-135 from its box. Wait, there's more. Here's the sheet music stand. There's the user manual. And here, finally, is the Casio CDP-135 digital piano. This adhesive strip needs to be removed from the keyboard before you can use it. The piano has a full 88 keys, the same amount as a real piano. Here are some of the controls on the CDP-135. There's a USB port for connecting to your computer on the rear of the keyboard, as well as connections for the damper pedal, headphones or audio out, and the power connection. Okay, now before I start the review, uh, I want to show you another Casio keyboard that I own. As a matter of fact, it was the first keyboard that I ever had, Casio VL Tone. I think it was 15 years old or 14 years old when I got this thing. Um, it had a uh, few tones in it, flute, guitar, violin, fantasy, and piano. And it had a little uh, beatbox in there. You know, like rhythm machine in there, you could change the tempo. You could even record songs on it. The Casio VL Tone. I've had other keyboards since then. The last keyboard that I had was a Korg, which I got a bunch of years ago. It was a Korg SG-1D Sampling Grand. And it sounded really nice. It also had kind of a nice touch to it, too. I went to Guitar Center, actually, and just was sort of playing. I was interested in seeing what they had. And uh, the one that caught my eye was like a Yamaha P115. So I played that. I also played the Yamaha P45. I also sort, sort of played the Casio PX160, as well as a Roland keyboard and some other higher priced ones, like, for example, like the Korg SV1, uh, which is a keyboard that I really like, and the Nord, which actually go, you know, a lot higher money. Basically, they had this thing. So, um, and it, they had it on sort of a pre-Black Friday deal, $300 for this keyboard, which is pretty cheap. I mean, for a weighted, graded um, hammer action keyboard, 
So I thought to myself, well, you can't go wrong for $300. So I've had it for about three or four days. I bought it. So now I'll give you my thoughts on this keyboard. It's an excellent value. It, it has, like I said, uh, a weighted keyboard action here, which, um, you know, if you're used to that, or if you're learning how to play, or if you want to practice, you know, for piano uh, without having a piano around, that's very important to have a weighted action. It's also a nice looking thing, you know, basically, I don't know if you can see it in this shot, but it's sort of a handsome looking keyboard comes with this stand here to put music on it. And then it comes with these two speakers on the side here. So I think this is a really great keyboard if you're just learning how to play or if you're a casual player or, you know, if you want to um, play with your friends and stuff like that. I think uh, there are a lot of good things to like about this keyboard. If you're a connoisseur of very high-end keyboards or if you're like a really, you know, professional player or if you're a recording artist, um, you know, there, there might be things that you might find to be on the um, lower end side of things. Um, but then again, it's only a $300 keyboard. So, you know, you can't have your expect expectations to be so high. I think for what the price is, it actually does deliver a lot for your money. So let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the speakers. The speakers, um, by the way, I'm going to talk about it now with uh, just the uh, sound, uh, the microphone out here, but I'll do some sound samples later. In any case, you've got these speakers here, and they sound okay. When you turn it on, it just defaults uh, to the uh, um, grand piano sound, and then you can turn it up. So that's the, um, the grand piano sound coming out of the two speakers here. So it has a pretty good sound, I think, and the speakers don't sound so bad. You can plug the machine into an amp or a better sound system, uh, or if you're performing some, somewhere, you could do that. So all in all, I would say the sound coming from the machine sounds pretty good for built-in speakers. There's not a lot of buttons on the thing because the keys, by holding down this function uh, button here, you can change a lot of things. So if you hold down the uh, function button, you could have like three different pianos. That was the standard. There's also sort of a more mellow sound. And then there's like a bright sounding piano. sounds. Now there's three electric piano sounds and actually I actually really like the electronic piano, uh, the electric piano sounds on this machine. The first electric piano has a nice sound to it. It's this one. So I like that one. Here's the second electric piano. Now here's the third electric piano, which is actually my favorite. sounding feel to it. So anyway, so I like that one. It also has a harpsichord. So that's the harpsichord sound. Uh, it also has, for example, strings. You've also got pipe organ. know when you might have 
have to play uh, at a wedding or something. And then there's also a nice jazz organ. So there's also a hall effect on the keyboard right here. It sounds like you're in a concert hall or some sort of a, of a hall there. So then you've got sort of a hall effect. Uh, there's also some chorus effects as well as some reverb effects. And we'll try to put on like a chorus effect. One other really good thing about the keyboard is that there's a USB jack on the back of it so you can plug it into your computer and use it as a MIDI controller. Now that's an interesting thing. So if you think about it, for about $300, which is not much more than you would spend for a MIDI controller keyboard, you get like a full digital piano, which you can use to um, you know, control samples or, or enter MIDI data into your uh, you know, DAW software from this uh, keyboard. Also, another interesting thing about this keyboard is that it's really not that heavy. As you can see, I can lift it without too much of effort here. This is light enough that if you get a nice case for it, you could easily take this as your gigging uh, machine, you know, and, and play around town with it. There's a great keyboard on the go, actually. So um, keep that in mind as well. So all in all, to sum it up, I would say that the Casio CDP-135 is a really nice um, keyboard for the value. Full 88 weighted scaled hammer action keys, which of course means that they're a little bit heavier down here and get a little lighter to press as you get higher, like a real piano would. And by the way, there's also a metronome built in. So it's kind of a you know no frills keyboard that you can um, take around with you if you need to. It uh, gives you a satisfying feeling. You feel like you're really playing a piano and not you know a, a toy. It has a little bit of a professional feel to it. Anyway, this is Joe Herman. I hope you like this review.
Good luck with your keyboard search and please like and subscribe.